Hey everyone, welcome back to the On The Rise podcast. It is episode 8 today with Arcondo, and Arcondo is a DJ and producer from the Netherlands. His tracks have been released on Revealed Recordings, Armada, and Trap Nation, and he's been supported by Martin Garrix, Hardwell, David Guetta, and many, many more. So today, we're lucky to have Arcondo on the podcast. So, uh, welcome. How's it going, man? I'm good, man. What about you? I'm, I'm doing great, man. Um, so... Let's talk about some things that are going on right now. Like before, we were just talking about some of the some of the new secret behind the scenes things of what's coming up. So, can you talk a little right. bit about that? Uh, yeah. So right now, I have four new singles ready, um, ready to be released. Um, they're more, yeah, like uh, they're more pop and trap kind of vibe because you know, as I told you before previously. Yeah, previously I did more big room and festival songs, but I just feel like also on Spotify, you know, like um, I made my first pop song, Is It Possible? And that became my biggest Spotify, uh, you know, uh, song uh, like one year ago. And if I compare it with all the big room stuff and, I, you know, it never got that big. Mm. And I mean, of course, you get played by hardware and stuff, but I, I totally wanted to spin it around and I I like a lot more what I'm doing right now. I feel like it's it's a lot more melodic, a lot more musical, and yeah, it's it, it gives you a bit more like mixed feelings and emotions, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Yeah. And then so yeah, four new singles ready, um, mainly pop and trap, and then um, some official remixes. Um, of course, I did my remix for Chainsmokers. Mm-hmm. I'll probably do a follow up. Um, and uh, a lot of collabs, yeah. Uh, so, some really big names. Um, Are you allowed to talk about those names? Not yet. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, no it's because it, it's like still in, in like a trial phase, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm gonna announce it soon, so it's it's gonna be really cool. Um, and yeah, so and then probably the most uh, uh, like fun thing for me is the the EP. There, there's going to be an EP of three songs, uh, three singles, uh, kind of experimental, but they're also kind of in the trap vibe. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be super fun, and I think a lot of people will like it. But yet again, it's going to be experimental. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, curious to know what everybody will think. Will yeah, think about that. Uh, mm-hmm. It's going to be an EP of three songs. Um, I haven't uh, had a, a date yet for it, but I hope to release it soon. So it's going to be really cool. <laughs> Sweet. And is that going to be on revealed recordings? Um, well, yeah. No, as I said, it's 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 way too experimental for like the big room. Uh, since revealed is only doing big room mm-hmm. uh, and the festival stuff, I'm planning to do it with Trap Nation or Bitbird. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like where it is right now. Um, but yeah, yet again, I have no clue yet. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really experimental yeah. stuff. Yeah. I can... Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And what about, uh, like DJing at shows and stuff, festivals? Um, yeah. So, uh, in Holland, I, I've been, I've been, uh, playing at like the, the big festivals, but when it comes to, um, playing uh, as a resident DJ or playing like weekly or monthly, mm-hmm. it's kind of been, can, been really tough. Um, because in Holland, you know, I think Holland is probably uh, the the most hardest country to be in. <laughs> Everyone is a DJ. Yeah, it's like even my dog can be a DJ. <laughs> no, I mean like for real. Um, and it's been so hard to, to to find a good agency. And I've had like tons of agencies before, and they all say the same thing: Hey, we're gonna push you out as much as possible, and then in the end, you only get one gig or two. And then they'll just leave you. Uh, I even had uh, two agencies just blocking me on every social media wow. platform. What? Just, I just randomly. And then I was like, okay, you know what? Forget it. Um, so this year has been kind of quiet. But I'm also doing a, a music school, the conservatory. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if, if you're familiar with that. Um, I, I th- is it uh, the Herman Brood Academy? Uh, yeah but it's it's kind of like a, a higher level <laughs> mm, okay. um so it's not like completely focused on um on dance music but 
it's it's focused on on everything. So I'm making music for movies now. I'm making mu- uh, music for commercials. That's amazing. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, dude, it's it has been so like it. It will just um, just break your spectrum, really, of of, of music. Mm-hmm. You know, you will learn so many more things. Um, so yeah, like music, making music for commercials, movies, uh, games, even, and uh, yeah, so that's that's super fun. You know, instead of only thinking, oh shit, I have to make another big room banger. You know, yeah. yeah <laughs> so. Yeah. Instead, you really do a lot of other things, and it, yeah, it's just super fun. So, um, and uh, because of that school, I'm able to do more festivals right now um, because they have connections, uh, of course. So, mm-hmm. I played um, in April at the, uh, no, in May at the. Uh, it's called Bevrijdingspop. It's like one of the the, the biggest Dutch uh, festivals. Uh, yeah, in in Holland, mm-hmm. um, and they have like di- different stages. But yeah, I was at one of those stages, um, and yeah, it was like super fun. I played in front of like two thousand people. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so that was really cool, you know. Um, but I think also for me, the main thing right now is just producing. Yeah. Because I I just I just realized that um, I like being more like active music wise instead of just playing i mean playing is really cool but i just kind of switched around i don't know how to how to say that um yeah that's that's the thing really but i hope to to get more uh gigs soon i'll be playing at ade i have like two gigs Sweet. during ade yes yes yeah, so that's gonna be really cool um and i have two uh, new agencies in holland that are interested in me so let's see how that goes yeah that's amazing all this yeah, is happening like in retrospect for you like everything all at once like but take me back to a time when you were little and like could you tell from a young age that you know you're gonna be a music producer like did you play instruments were you like a musical Uh, type of kid yeah so um my dad used to play in a band uh he's from italy and he basically earned his money with uh yeah with playing in a band basically Mm -hmm. so he played the guitar and he used to sing as well and then when i was like already two years old i got my first acoustic guitar um and that's how yeah and then i took like guitar lessons piano lessons even like um flute lessons or whatever (laughs) um and um yeah and then i i I played uh at, at like um stages at school you know Mm -hmm. so i started singing and playing guitar um and yeah it worked out actually really well at at such a a young age i was like 10 back then um then i completely switched around i started dancing (laughs) uh which is is still music wise you know ballet or no 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 (laughs) no. it's like hip-hop pop um kind of kind of the 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 rough vibe of dancing yeah um so yeah, and that's something I really enjoyed, and then I completely forgot the music. I I was not even thinking about music at all mm-hmm. um, until I, I I just yeah I don't know I, I believe I I started uh, hearing the first song of Martin Garrix Animals. Yeah. Oh, I, of course it's not like his first song, but the, his song they got like you know big as mm-hmm. fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It's like it's fucking hot here. It's like. <laughs> 800 degrees <laughs> but um uh and then when i heard that song i was like mind blown i was like holy shit you know this is so cool and then i tried to do it on my own and i i downloaded a software which was called a, a garage band mm-hmm. and all right this is gonna be super funny but i wanted like to tell you right now so uh you probably heard my song boa with maestro harrell i think so yes on Armada, that's the song. Yeah, 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 Armada one. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, so I made like the drop and the intro build up that part, and I made that in GarageBand. <laughs> oh my, really? Yeah. <laughs> what? So you can no, get I'm released like, on Armada by using GarageBand. Yeah, I'm confirm. not kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I was like, I was the the best kid in GarageBand. Like, oh I didn't even. I, I think like uh, favela, like I made favela and garage band, Canyon, Tyrant, Insidious, and even look Insidious, hundred eight thousand plays on SoundCloud, which has been made in garage band. Like, oh my god! How is it even possible? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So yeah, um, but yeah, like, even the, those uh, Armada things, yeah, just GarageBand, and then I started developing more in GarageBand until like uh, I think two years ago, I was like, I need something else. I I really need to step up my game because GarageBand, <laughs> or yeah, GarageBand is like a free software, right? Yeah. So you like it's not possible to like um to to break the records with a free program which is super <laughs> shit as well by the way um so then i downloaded logic pro x and that's the software which i'm using right now plus ableton um i tried fl studio 2 fruity loops i don't yeah, know if yeah. you know that yeah, yeah, yeah of course yeah. um but it's, it's just not made for me um and Logic is like the, the older brother of GarageBand. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it was super easy to to learn all the, the techniques and to learn what Logic can do, you know, because it, it looks so much like GarageBand. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's kind of like the background. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and what age did you start producing it? I'm sorry, what? What what age did you start producing it? Um... Um, like actually producing, I think it was like 12, 13. Um, yeah, no, like around 13, 14 years old. What I did mainly was like kind of remaking songs that I liked. Mm -hmm. And of course I used GarageBand. So, uh, back in the day, I really liked the dubstep vibe. So from Zomboy, Skrillex, um, uh, I believe Nervo too. Mm -hmm. uh, Flux Pavilion, he was like... yeah. yeah, yeah my main idol idol like uh, four he's years coming ago back actually he's coming back for, into the scene for real yeah he's releasing so many new like tracks and, and collaborations oh shit yeah, yeah. I, I haven't been following that guy for a while but yeah he had this uh this song i think it's called bass cannon um mm -hmm. that was like my favorite jam like i listened it 24 7 <laughs> um and um uh, but yeah, and then I started remaking those songs uh, to learn more on like how everything uh, is made, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then with that knowledge, I could, uh, uh, yeah, like when I got that knowledge, I could implement it with my original songs. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's how it started growing. Mm -hmm. And and for for like younger producers that are like twelve, thirteen, fourteen now and want to get into like producing you would recommend like remaking tracks as like a way to improve uh totally i like i have to be completely honest with you if i haven't remade songs mm -hmm. like i'm still remaking songs like um like from from martin garrix or whatever like i'm still doing that oh, wow. because if you remake songs you'll learn so much more um i i started using ableton um not like uh, uh, producing original content, but mm. remaking stuff. And when you remake stuff, uh, you you just have like you know what to do. You know, like oh, I want that sound. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to try to make. Mm -hmm. And then the next time you can use that same technique for that sound from that song, but use it differently so it's going to be yours. But at mm -hmm. least you know how to do it. So, and I really notice it a lot is that young producers start uh, doing mashups and stuff, but I really wouldn't do that because with mashups, you're not learning anything. It's it's almost like beat matching, but then yeah, tends yeah. to work. <laughs> um, so I would, yeah, I would really recommend not even like doing like remixes, right? Oh, I rem yeah, I just, as a, my personal view, mm -hmm. I would um, definitely... Uh, try to, to yeah to remake stuff because mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's going to be super helpful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of remix competitions out now, and it seems like a lot of young like producers that are starting out are trying to trying to do that. But it seems like it is what you're trying to say like start remaking tracks, get good, and then possibly start the remix competitions and stuff to gain like yeah. If you win those, you get so much exposure and and yeah, you could poten potentially like start your career i guess yeah um but yeah but just i mean of course i'm just talking about my perspective mm -hmm. um and i just noticed that if i started remaking songs i just learned a lot more on how chords were made how melodies were made how uh different effects were were made and and put out you know mm -hmm. uh, so yeah for me that that's like the 
the, the best way to, to start off, you know, learning things instead of, you know, releasing stuff and, and pushing things out. Mm -hmm. And um, so you started releasing tracks and you started gaining like more and more listeners and fans and getting your tracks released everywhere. What would you say was like your, I guess, one of the bigger moments where you gained like a lot of exposure, like kind of like... Um, so definitely... Uh... So my first moment, you mean, or like the... yeah, yeah. So, so like the first moment that you started to gain like traction that you could see, like a, a kind of like a viral track or something that got so popular. I think, right. Uh, I think like like really viral mm -hmm. uh, was Insidious. It was like three years ago. Um, that's like um, that's like a super unique song because I I remember it was like almost Halloween. And I, I watched like five different horror movies and I was totally in that vibe. So I wanted to create a horror type track. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I made this song in like two days or three days. I was so into it. And then I, I, I didn't even know what mastering was or mixing. So I just published it with that, like, like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and without me even knowing, you know, like it, it started growing so big. I remember Chesto downloaded it. Um, oh my god! And, wow. Yeah, and um, on on YouTube it went it went really well. Uh, I think Bang the House also uploaded it, and uh, uh, Night Core Music, mm -hmm. who has like uh, four hundred thousand subscribers. Um, and but the main thing was that it went super viral on um, I think Vine or something. Yeah, I think really? it was what Vine. Yeah, it's like like people just started dancing to the song and and like a lot of people made like festival music uh, clips with with the song. Mm -hmm. And I think th that never happened to any song but this one. And it was yeah, it was like so surprising, you know. <laughs> um and then yeah, I think after Insidious definitely Boa. Like with if I had never met Master Aurel I wouldn't have met, you know, uh, the people like Reggio, um, just yeah, uh, all the all the people, you know, after that, Sabers, um, yeah, you name it. That really got my name bigger. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, totally. That's awesome. Um, what would you say inspires you to produce your tracks? Um, what inspires me? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a tough. Where do you one. get your inspiration from? Um, so what I, I mean, that, that's really tough. I, I often have writer blocks or like, yeah, writer blocks. Mm -hmm. Um, that just means that, you know, you, you, everything you produce, it's just not working. And like, yeah. you, you really don't have any inspiration with like, sometimes I, I record a guitar loop or I play piano and I record chords and then you're just like, oh shit, no, this this isn't working. And I was just like, what is this? <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I think what I I mean that that's a really tough one, and it really depends. Sometimes I remember I made the the my Chain Smokers remix on Trap Nation mm -hmm. in like four days because I was wow. so inspired with it, and I I wrapped it up so quick. And um, sometimes I have songs that you know that, that are taking me three months. Like, fu like, like fully, like wow. every day working on a song for three months, because I have different ideas and then not, and then writer's block, more ideas, nope, 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 and then yeah, it's it's taken a long time, but to get inspiration, I think, just listening to to Chill Nation or Trap Nation, going to, through every music, mm -hmm. uh, like track, and then finding three similar songs. So, not I mean not similar, yeah, like three songs that are kind of in the same vibe and then I, I save them and then I check them out, download them, start analyzing them and then start to, you know, uh, create your own song. Mm -hmm. Start creating your own song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This, th that, that's kind of my way, but yet again, that's super hard. It's a really hard subject. Mm -hmm. um, and so you started producing, you started getting like the, the attention of the, the YouTube labels and stuff. And then, which was the the very first one that you signed to? Armada, Trap Nation, or Revealed? Um, Armada, because with Boa, that was my first actual like 
big contract I have released on like smaller labels. I think like Loca or whatever that was like four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, sell recordings. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Like the, but I mainly released songs on my own label because I didn't want to, you know, already work with contracts and stuff. But I just want to put them out so people yeah. can hear them. Yeah. Um, that was my main priority, really. Mm-hmm. And how how did that whole process look like with you getting signed to Armada? Did you send them like a demo, or did they approach you? Um, no. So that was really funny. It's like. Uh, Maestro, he uh, reached out to me on SoundCloud with a private message. <laughs> he was just saying, hey, man, I love your stuff. Let's do something together. And he, he sent me, like, a break idea. Mm-hmm. And it was like, holy shit, like, I, I never knew him. But, like, he's also an actor, and he, he played in, like, several movies. And Whoa, what? He, he, huh. Yeah, he, I, he played in, like, The Walking Dead or something. Like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, and, like, like, House of Cards. I don't know, like bunch of shit but this dude is like really popular <laughs> um and or, or yeah he was already popular so mm-hmm. so then i was checking out his profile i was like holy shit i i really don't have to let him go <laughs> um so then i started making uh, a drop for it and we started like texting calling um and then we wrapped up the song and then joey dale mastered or no um uh joe suki or whatever um he mastered the song and then Maestro sent it out to Armada, and then they wanted to sign it, like, instantly. That's amazing. So, uh, yeah. So, and, really well. mm-hmm. and for producers that are trying to get, like, the attention of bigger labels, what advice would you give them to go about that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Big stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that's, I mean, dude, like, it's really tough, man. It's like, um... I really thought, like, you know, songs I made, they were, like, really uh, unique, but um, but also, like, just really good in, in the mix and monster, and they, they sounded all well, and I was like, holy shit, this can be revealed, this can be an armada. But all these labels, they're only looking for, um, I don't know, I, no, actually, I have no clue. It's, it's, it's so hard. Three years ago, I, I thought... Uh, to get a, a track on revealed would be super easy you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um yeah because you know, I, I released pantheon there and um but then it it's almost like from that day it started going more difficult and more difficult and i i think i sent 12 demos to armada this past uh three years because uh, you're like 12 oh that's not a lot but Mm-hmm. because i i really don't have a good vibe about armada <laughs> but um and then they start denying like all my songs and it's almost like dude are you only taking me because of maestro or are you taking me because my tracks are good or not you know hmm. because the, these labels aren't giving you proper feedback either yeah um so yeah to to, to get on these labels pff, um that's a really tough call um Hmm. um yeah it's just it's just yeah sending your demos that's uh, like that that's it there is no even if you have like a backdoor connection or you know the A&R manager Mm -hmm. it's not guaranteed that with that connection you can be in revealed or armada you know Mm -hmm. um it's you you never know what they're looking for I thought I knew it already three years ago but I still don't know. <laughs> That's so, crazy. Yeah, it's it's really tough, dude. Hmm. And, well, like three years ago, there weren't as many bedroom producers as there is now. Like the bedroom producing groups, like on Facebook and stuff, had like maybe a couple thousand members. But now they're reaching like almost a hundred thousand members in like yeah each of the groups. Like it's the competition is even is even higher. And and these record labels are getting like thousands of submissions all the time right like right yeah yeah. totally you gotta you gotta stand out and be unique and and that's kind of what i want to get to into the next thing is how how do you stay unique like what's your production process like how do you separate yourself from the rest of the producers Mm, well to be completely honest with you i i can't because um there are only seven uh unique songs out there Mm-hmm. only seven 
Mm-hmm. One is from the Beatles. One is from uh, um, like Carl Perkins, like all the older guys. Everything is already out there. Everything like you you can say of a song uh, that's like super unique that has been released like two months ago. No, you know, like the chord progression has already been used. No, the bass line has already been used. The vocal has two uh, like a, a, a super similar melody like another song out there. So to be honest, no one is original. No one is unique because it, it's almost impossible if you have a platform like SoundCloud, which has like loads and loads and loads of, of, of people making music. Um which will it will take your uh ability away to be unique because it's not possible anymore like mm-hmm. this is this is sounding super tough but it's it's not possible <laughs> and <laughs> to be honest i'm super lucky that i'm still doing this that i have released some trap nation that tracks on my spotify are doing well mm-hmm. but i've just been super lucky like super lucky because for other people that are trying the same thing if you don't have connections, if you don't have uh, a manager or someone that can, you know, uh, support you, mm-hmm. you you're you're doomed, really. <laughs> wow. No, yeah. it is kind of like the reality, right? Like you can't really sugarcoat what is actually going on. And that's, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's 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 good that you're being honest as well, because some producers like to sugarcoat it as well. But yeah, I appreciate the honesty, and I think a lot of people will get like some value out of this you know yeah i mean like i'm not trying to like shit everyone's pants and you know everybody's <laughs> just gonna go and 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 work at the supermarket now but like yeah. i mean please do what you do like when it comes to music if you love making music make music however i, I like even for me you know like i have to admit uh not all my content is unique or original because it's just not possible anymore mm-hmm because you you're not able to stand out in front of all the other producers because it, it's already there it's already there and the thing is um, there is then the percentage of course which is uh, unique you know if you compare it to that other song or songs whatever um, and then the audience or your fans will say hey I like this song more than the other song mm-hmm. so then they'll come to you so that's the thing make it better than what's already out there you know what actually that's a really fucking good tip i think (laughs) it's like don't try to be unique try to be better than the content that yeah than the content that's out there oh wow yeah that's actually really good yeah man there's a quote i think like the uh like the same thing almost um but it was about like um it was like running away from a bear like you don't have to be the fastest but you just have to be faster than like the last person or something Dude, exactly that's 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 the thing like people are always trying to look for unique stuff unique content there isn't so try to be better uh, with what you make compared to other songs mm-hmm. try to be, try to you know listen to a song and be like hey i can do this better not mm-hmm. say hey i can make this more unique no because then there is already something else out there make it better yeah better so then then you will grow like a fan base or audience for your songs. Wow, that, that, that's that's kind of like counterintuitive to what most advice is given. It's like others like, yeah, just be unique, just try to make like no. a different sound. Yeah, see, that's it, it, it's already out there. It's already out there. Simple. Huh. Oh my god, that's for real. That's actually I'm, I, I wrote that down, so I'm I'm definitely gonna insert that in somewhere because this is this is really <laughs> yeah, good stuff. No, I mean, I, I'm even surprised myself. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, on the topic of connections, who would you say some of, uh, like are some of were or are some of your um, like best connections that you've made that have helped you progress in your career? And like, where did you meet these guys? Like ADE or just like um, at gigs? So I think, um, I mean, by far, as I already mentioned, Maestro Harrell. Like this dude has been like. Back in the day, like I'm not uh, speaking with him a lot now, but mm-hmm. back in the day, he was almost like my mentor. Like he he taught me so many things, and he he really pushed my name out there because of Armada. And then I started growing with Revealed. Um, 
And I think the label that is helping me out the most right now is Enhanced Music. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like an exclusive artist there right now. And they helped me get signed to Sony, ATV as publishing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like the biggest uh, publishing in the world, you know. And um, yeah, they, they, they just do a lot for me, you know, taking care of top lines. Uh, I'm yeah, I have like th this gig in ADE with them maybe touring with the 10 years of enhanced um so that's going to be really cool and those are all the the connections i've made during these years um but of course you know uh also friends and and well yeah colleagues <laughs> mm -hmm. um that also help me out with with songs collabs and then you know together you make something and then you send it out to, to labels and then that, mm -hmm. that's how you um yeah, how it got well for me, basically, during these years. And when you were, uh, like, a couple years ago, and you were not getting released on these labels, were you going to events like ADE to meet, like, other producers and stuff? Um, yeah, so last year I, I had, like, uh, a couple meetings uh, with, uh, yeah, with Enhanced, but also with producers and, and, and Trab Nation, um, other managers from... Uh, I actually was uh, at a dinner with Enhance and the manager of Rihanna and Def Jam. <laughs> so that that was like super big. <laughs> um, amazing. And then, yeah, and then of course this year I'm, I'm doing these gigs with ADE. Um, and then last summer I was backstage with Martin Garrix at Ushuaia. Wow. But then, yeah, so I, I, you know, I spoke with Alan Walker, Martin Garrix, Justin Milo. How was uh, that? It was super fun. Like it was super cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I had, you know, uh, I got phone numbers from people and it's just, um, yeah, you, you start talking, you know, and you, that was super funny because I got played by Martin Garrix because I gave him my USB uh, with Is It Possible? Wow. And yeah, it was super funny because like a month later, um, the song got out and then um, he, he played the song on his radio show. So, and no one else sent it to, to him except me giving him the USB. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was super funny. That's uh, all those connections. It can be really uh, good and helpful and fun, of course. That's amazing. Who, who's, yeah, your, who's your favorite to talk to? Martin Garrix, Justin Milo? Who did you have like, um, a connection with? Well, um, uh, most fun. Well, I haven't, like, I'm not actually friends with, with Martin Garrix or uh, I'm kind of friends with Justin Milo, but... Um, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I think who are really cool guys are um, Tritonal. They're like, uh, like I don't know if you know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I'm actually working with them as well, and they're really cool guys. Um, really helpful too. But I think uh, I think one of my my, my main friends uh, during these years are are people like Boothead. I made far out with him. He's like one of my best friends with the music scene. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like uh, Wolf Snare. I, I don't know if you remember him from also I, my. I do, yeah, yeah. Uh, Canova. <laughs> um, and yeah, like vocalist, like Men End. Th this dude is super talented, and I have also another song coming out with him, so that's gonna be really fun too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, who who are some producers uh, that you want to collaborate with in the future? Um, um, whew, that's a, that was a really tough one. Uh, I think, uh, one of my, my, um, my, my favorite producers is Fabian Mazur. I think he's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually had, uh, some contact with him when I sent him a song of mine and he was like super impressed with it and he gave me his uh, email and kind of his Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think this dude is really talented, and um, same as with, with is with Tritonal, um, uh, Mickey Fallon, also from Trap Nation. Um, yeah, those kind of people, you know, the people that are are like getting bigger, you know. Now, um, yeah, pretty much it. I, I've had uh, already some great experiences with people, so I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so we're nearing the end of the podcast um so right. one of the last questions is what advice would you give just in general to 
um, start producers that are starting out or trying to get big, like um, inspiration advice, kind of like that kind of stuff? Um, so I'd rather not, or, yeah, I'd rather not talk about um, inspiration. I'd rather talk about um, if you're like a young producer and you're making music, don't try to think about, um, uh, you know, getting signed somewhere, but try to learn first. Try to, what I say, you know, what I said before is try to remake songs, try to get better, try to try to learn an instrument, you know, uh, to, to get to know chords, to get to know, um, to, to play the guitar, you know, stuff like that. And even more important is uh, never, never give up. It sounds kind of salty, but <laughs> mm-hmm. never uh give up on on your dreams you know if if uh a label says no try to work harder try to be like hey you know what fuck it i'm gonna make three more songs send them their way and then hopefully they'll take it and then they say no again don't downgrade yourself but keep working harder because uh if you if you're a quitter you're not gonna you're you're not gonna uh you know reach the 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 final Mm mm-hmm um or the finals or how you're gonna say that (laughs) yeah yeah Um, goals yeah yeah exactly um and um try to uh to communicate with other people try to call up with people because i think if if i never uh accepted like to work with other people i never got to the place where i'm right now Mm -hmm. um so i think that's that's a really important move for for coming producers try to connect with people uh get in producer groups uh dm people or at at least producers (laughs) Mm -hmm. and um yeah that's i think um the best advice i can give Mm -hmm. no that's really good advice networking ade and stuff in real life connections as well yeah right um so what does the next couple years look like what's your where do you want to be in a couple years like what do you have in mind um for that um uh another tough one um so my goal is to just play more and eventually play internationally Mm -hmm. um so and then yeah just just try to make more music and to to get more labels so I'm, i'm making so many songs right now and basically i'm just trying to 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 get more fans to get more people to but also just to keep doing what i love and with that um um, uh, yeah idea in mind to then reach more people you know Mm -hmm. um just sharing my music more and uh yeah that's just uh everything i i i I want to do really (laughs) sweet and for people who are listening right now who want to go and follow and support you, where do they go and find you? Oh, that's my mom, by the way. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, come again. Um, for people who are listening right now that want to follow and support you, where can they find you? Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so um, they can follow me on Instagram, SoundCloud, Facebook. Um, and um, yeah, just Twitter they can follow me basically everywhere <laughs> sweet yeah um, awesome thank you so much for for coming on to the podcast thank you for having uh, me dude like i hope uh, i i can inspire people with this and uh yeah that they all that they can have some like advice you know with this <laughs> yeah no dude definitely amazing advice be better not unique it's kind exactly of like a paradox um so I'll, I'll definitely be posting that in a bunch of places um but yeah, you are coming out with a new EP, a lot of new songs, a lot of new stuff. So people should definitely look forward to following you and supporting your music. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening um, to On The Rise Podcast Episode 8. This was with Arcondo. I will leave all his links down below. Go follow him, go support him. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace. Hey, cheers. <laughs>